Hey everybody, I'm Boobs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here with me. Recently, you guys have been asking for some more makeup tutorials, especially for eye makeup. So I'm bringing you another one. It's the holiday season. I thought, why not? Another bonus video for you guys. And I hope it makes you happy. If these are not the types of videos that you like, I'm sorry, please don't fret. We're back to fashion next time. And thank you so much either way, whether you stay to watch the video or not, I appreciate you and I hope you have a very happy day. But let's just pop right into it, you guys. This is one of the easiest and fastest makeup looks that I do and I hope that it's just as easy for you and I hope you enjoy. So last time I did a tutorial, I was using two different palettes and I used like quite a bit more products. I feel like this eye makeup look is even more simple and this is the other most requested tutorial for you guys. So I'm just going to use just one palette this time. It's the Blush Crush palette from ColourPop. I think they should still have it, but really it's just warm blushy tones. So everything is pretty warm toned in here and they're, you know, reds, blushes, pinks plummy colors. So mostly I'm just using really, really light colors in this, but I'll, I'll put the little arrows to show you which shade so you can try to match it. But first I'm just going to take a big soft brush. Something big and floofy is fine. It can be a big round brush or it can be a big flat brush. It's not going to make much of a difference what you pick. And I'm just going to go in with the lightest one possible, which in this palette is lovesick here. And it's just a very slight warm toned, very slight pinkish nude, almost like a bridal nude or bridal cream, it reminds me of. And I'm just putting this all over my lid. I'm not priming my lid with anything. I'm not using concealer on my lids. Nothing like that. In part because, again, I've told you this so many times. Every time I do a tutorial, I talk about this, so I'm not trying to be a broken record. But... I like things to be fast. I don't like too much product involved because then you just start looking like you have a face paint on like a costume or something and it feels that way. I like being comfortable. So that's why I'm skipping the primer or concealer on my lids because I just I don't need that extra step. But I do want a nice even surface for my eyeshadow. I still want the powders to go on smooth and not skip or anything like that. And if you have, you know, the natural oils of your skin along your eyelids, it will cause patchy eyeshadow if you don't do something. So I'm applying just this really light nude all over my lids to absorb any oil and to give me a nice base to start with. Next, I'm going to go in with just a basic soft crease brush, this one's called, and this peachy one here. This one's called The One, and it's just a nice peachy nude, just a little bit darker than the other one. And I'm just going to go right here across, kind of, where I normally contour my eye area. My eyelid area just kind of up and above the crease and out in almost like a straight line towards the edge of my eyebrow the only spot that I'm avoiding is this area right here and really I'm not trying to bring it all the way to this area but it's okay if it gets in there because that's just gonna add some contour and add some shape to the eye so it's fine and I'm not bringing it down into my crease either but one of the benefits of this eye makeup look is you're using such pale colors and tones that it really doesn't matter if you're perfect with it or pre super precise with it because the colors are so light that it's not going to like ruin anything if you're not blending it perfectly or you are messy with it like it really doesn't matter this time. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of this one here cheek to cheek. It's a true blushy color, but it's not too pinkish either. I have done this eye look with the pinker of the colors or like sparklier colors. I've done this with lots of different shades too, not just the warm pinks. So it's versatile in that way. You can really use whatever you like. And But for me, for this one, I'm just going to richen up the crease just a tad, but I'm not using anything too dark still. As you can see, it's still very, very muted and very, very light. And part of what makes it easy to blend here is that we've already laid down a peachy nude first 
right above where this one's going to go in. So this color is automatically kind of running into that peach and helping to diffuse it. But it just allows for a tiny bit more depth. Just blending it out a little bit on the tail end of things here, on the outer corner edge, just a little, but not much. And that's it for the eyeshadow part, except for the shimmers. So we're gonna go in with shimmers next already. This is really, really fast and easy, you guys. So in this palette, I have lots of options for shimmers, but I wanna keep it pretty bright and light. This one's like a pink with gold duo tone, which is really neat and interesting. It's really, really pretty. This one's just a really peachy shimmer, and then this one's really, really pale, the lightest shimmer. I think... Let's have fun with it. Let's use all three. I'm gonna start with the darkest of the shimmers, but if you don't have three different shades of shimmer, then don't worry about it. Just use one. It doesn't really matter. But I'm applying shimmer pretty much just to the lid area, just swiping back and forth. And then I'm gonna pat really gently along the edge of where I applied, just up towards the crease, just a tad, and up just a little higher here along this area. Just get kind of tie it in, I guess. Same thing on the other side, just some quick swipes back and forth to coat the entire lid. And pat. And then I'm gonna go in with the next lightest one, just all across the center. I'm even gonna use slightly swirly circular motions here. And then pat around where I applied it. This is just creating a little bit of a gradient to the shimmers. It's not adding that much. You know, it's just adding a little bit more dimension to your shimmers, sprucing it up just a little bit to make it look like it has more dimension. And by keeping your lightest one just in the center, I'm just barely swiping it in just the very center and I'm trying not to pat it out too much. I want this one very much in the center. You can even kind of just roll your finger back and forth to add a little bit of that blending effect. And then I'm gonna dab a little bit here on the inner corners. And this at first is gonna look really out of control, but we're gonna rein it back in. Don't you, don't you worry, you just wait. But for now, it's going to look crazy. It's going to look like too much on the inner corners. And that's what we want for this step. Because it's just a tiny little area. You're going to get messy. I feel like so many um, tutorials don't show just how messy sometimes you need to get before you get the right result. So now I'm just going to take a concealer brush to clean up the excess from that shimmer right here. At least start to clean it up a little bit. But as I do my eyeliner, I was, I was saying, I almost forgot my train of thought, when you keep the lighter shimmer, or if even if you're doing mattes, when you keep the lighter color towards the center, it's often called a halo or a spotlight eye. I have another tutorial on a halo eye that's a little bit more complicated. This one's so simple and it's very very muted but even still when you have the lighter color in the center and in this case that's the lighter shimmer in the center it does help to make your eyes look a little bit bigger and a little bit more round and my eyes are not like particularly round so I like the effect that the halo eye has And while I don't think it necessarily, you know, has a super dramatic effect, making my eyes look like dramatically more round or big or anything like that, it does a little bit. It's a subtle effect. And that's all you really need with makeup anyway. Something subtle. But this look is a little bit heavier on the eyeliner. So I'm applying my eyeliner as I normally would and then adding it making it even thicker. So let me show you like my usual eyeliner line is more like this. Just pretty quick, pretty thin. This one might even be a little bit thicker than I normally do. 
Yeah. This is still a little thicker than I normally do, but this is pretty close. I mean, just ever so slightly thicker than what I normally do right here. But I'm going to make it just a little bit more dramatic and just a little bit thicker and a little bit chunkier, mostly on the outer corner. So I'm starting from the outer corner and just letting my pencil taper away as it gets towards the center. And then I'm going to line the bottom. I'm tight lining the bottom. And if you really don't like liner in your waterline, that's fine. You can just keep it to your lash line. For the longest time, I was freaked out by that, but I'm, I'm over it now. You want a decent amount of liner on the bottom, but you don't want to thicken up the bottom liner at all. You don't want to make it like, we're not going full goth or anything here. You don't want to make it too awful thick along the bottom, but you can have it be somewhat, you know what I mean? You want the liner to be showing up on the bottom, but not necessarily like overpowering the whole eye look here. Now we're going to draw the wing and we're gonna do a nice big dramatic wing here. It's pretty good. Remember, wings are always going to be cousins, not twins, not even sisters. And then you just have to connect the corners. That's all this is, corner connecting. And you can thicken the corner if you want to make it look even more dramatic and kind of thicken up that line a little bit because you do want it to be relatively thick. If you are going to be wearing this for a long time or you really want it to last really, really well or, you know, you are prone to smudging or something like that, then take a little brush that's like an angled brush or something really small like, like this one from Eco Tools that I showed you guys last time. Take a little brush like this, a concealer brush even, something like this maybe, something really precise, if we could focus. Something really precise. I recommend stamping dark or black eyeshadow on top of your eyeliner to help it last longer, to help it be a little bit darker and less prone to smudging. But I personally don't have the need to do that this time, but I do that whenever I am doing some sort of activity where I really need my liner to stay put. If you do really need your eyeliner to last, that's a great trick. Or if you're really prone to running. So I'm going in with a dark like burgundy color now or like a wine color right on top of where my eyeliner is. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black as well. Mostly on the outer corner area, but I'll go ahead and sweep it towards the center just for continuity. Okay, now I'm gonna apply one coat of mascara to my top lashes to give them a good start. Okay, so I've got one coat of mascara started here. I'm gonna do my eyebrows while that dries. And really, we're pretty much done with the eyes with one exception. We're gonna smudge out the bottom just a little bit more. It's that simple, you guys. This is one of the fastest and simplest looks because it's mostly eyeliner. If you wanted to simplify the shadow part even more, you could. You could do, like I said, just one shimmer or even skip shimmers and just leave it nude and just kind of give you yourself a quick wash of kind of nude neutrals all over the lid, and that would look fine too. I mean, it's just... The showcase of this particular eye look, 
is the liner because it's bold and intense. So the eyeliner really is like enough. That's all you really need is that liner. You don't need to add anything else. Like we have seen with things like red and black dresses, if you already have that drama, you need nothing else. Same with the eyes. If you're doing big eyeliner, you're probably also going to have some lashes or at least mascara, then you don't really need a bunch more, you know, adding over the top vibes. You can just kind of let that eyeliner make the statement for you. And for me, eyeliner is not super time consuming. It's pretty quick and easy. That's why I stick with pencils because I feel like as soon as I go to try to use a liquid eyeliner or something more like a gel eyeliner or something, then I'll suddenly forget how things work and I'll it'll be time consuming and messy and I won't do a good job. So that's why I stick with what I know, pencil. So one more coat of mascara here and then I am doing false lashes for filming today. So um, I will stop at two coats of mascara, but if you are not doing fake lashes, then I recommend going for three coats of mascara for sure. It's time to smudge out the lower lash line a little bit more. So first I'm gonna use just a sort of in-between blushy color that I haven't used on my lids at all because that just adds a little bit of a, a complimentary color down here that's not too matchy-matchy. I really like that effect, especially with simpler eye makeup looks. It's not like adding another color down here is going to overwhelm things or turn chaotic, but it's, as you can see, slightly more mauve compared to the slightly more pink and peach. And then I'm going to use a slightly floofier brush with a little of that. In fact, it's the same brush that I used for this color before, that sort of blushy, true blush tone, just to make sure things are nice and gradient and not too intense down here. Oftentimes, we forget to tap off the excess or something and then we're like, whoa, that was way too much. But if you just turn your brush sideways to where it's more like this against your skin than this, for under the eye, it'll work out okay. And always do it before your lower lash line mascara, for sure. Okay, and then I'm just taking a clean, relatively big, fluffy, soft brush and just kind of going underneath that whole area to make sure there's nothing smudging or going astray at all. And now it's time to put some mascara on the lower lash line before lashes. When you're doing mascara for your lower lash line, just place it there and wiggle back and forth side to side and then go down. Because it's so difficult to just go up and down, I feel. I mean, you can, but it takes so long to get the mascara on those little tiny lashes down there. So if you start by going side to side, it kind of grabs your lashes and brings them into the bristles of the mascara brush a little bit, and then you swipe down. You'll have a lot more product on those lower lashes, and from there, you can kind of clean it up and lay them the way you want them to stay with up and down motions. Initial attempt at getting color on your lashes, going side to side helps a lot. All right, so the only thing that I'm noticing is that up here is not quite as blended as I want it to be, so I'm just gonna run my brush back over here one time without adding any more shadow or product because I like the amount of color, I like the amount of shading and all of that. I just am noticing it's not quite as blended right there as I want it to be right beneath my eyebrow. So along my brow bone, I'm just taking no new product, just the residue that was left on this one and blend that out a little bit and that's all done. Now it's time for lashes and I have been obsessed with the wild and wispy unruly lashes from iLure and I have been linking them for you guys so if you like false lashes or you want to give them a try, iLure I find to be a way better brand. But before I get started on that, I'm just going to apply a tiny bit of foundation today. I don't always, but I am today. I like using the Bare Minerals Bare Pro foundation. 
This is shade 12, Warm Natural. Absolutely obsessed with Bare Minerals Foundation. It does not break me out that bad. I mean, like, all foundations for me are tricky, slippery slopes because my skin gets upset. It just wants to be left alone. But I do leave my skin alone most of the time. And I'm not gonna spend more than that on it. So other foundations sometimes have been recommended to me that are even more expensive than Bare Minerals. I just, I feel silly spending that much on makeup. I would rather do something cool. If I'm gonna splurge for something, I'd rather splurge for an experience is my point. I'd rather splurge on experiences than splurge on makeup. Not that makeup's not important, and not that I don't like makeup, I do, but it's not, I mean, is it worth spending like nearly $100 on foundation? I don't think so. <sighs> Jesus whiz. So I usually start my face makeup before applying my lashes because the powders from contour, bronzer, things like that, blush, uh, tend to leave little residue on your lashes. So your lashes will stay cleaner and last you longer if you don't get debris from powder, face powder, and other makeup products on them. So that's what I tend to do. Right now I'm just applying a little bit of contour. And again, same as last time, I'm using NARS Laguna to contour, and I usually just apply it with this little brush and then go through with a big brush to blend. It works so much better for me. I also tend to kind of combine it with my bronzing at the same time, which I'm using Bare Minerals for this time. I find that brushes are my favorite. I don't really like sponges. I never really have used makeup sponges for blending and stuff like that. I don't find them to be a necessary thing to try if you're used to brushes because I've never been like, wow, the sponge did so much better of a job. So when it comes to applying face makeup and powders and stuff, if you're a brush gal, then stick with it. I, I would say don't bother trying the sponges. But of course, if you're somebody who always uses sponges, I would highly recommend you try brushes. For blush, I like keeping it back out this way, but also sometimes bring a little into the apples of the cheeks. That very much depends on your face, where your blush placement will look best. But I find high up towards the cheekbones and then a little bit on the apples of the cheeks, like never should you ever apply your blush or bronzer down here the way we see Meghan Markle have a little circle of blush way down here? It's insanity. And don't do it. It's so weird. Don't, don't do it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. Then this, I have had a hard time finding this to link for you guys, so I don't know if they're still selling this or not. But for a nice diffused highlighter, I've been using this pressed highlighter by Bare Minerals. This one's called Free Endless Glow Highlighter. Free as in, that's the shade. The shade is called Free. <laughs> um, I don't know what's going on if they're not selling it anymore or what, but I love it. And it gives a nice like almost sparkly shimmery highlight that's just really gentle and diffused. And that's all I use lately and I think it just has a nice finish so now it's time to do lashes I'm doing I'm gonna get out a new pair of these wispy wild and unruly lashes I absolutely love these what I like about Ilure's lashes is that they're so easy to put on for me for my eye shape they have a nice curve to them and I have tried Ardell Demi Wispies which do not have a very good curve I hated them. I couldn't get them to cooperate for me. Somebody in the comments said, try like curling it around your makeup brush or something first or your mascara first, like curl it around there and see if it will work better for you. I tried that and it did 
like curve the lash, but I still didn't, I still wasn't able to get it on properly. So it still kind of didn't work that great for me, sadly. One of the biggest mistakes people tend to make with the lashes is they try to stick them on too soon. If the glue, at least the glue I use, which is, let me tell you, that's relevant here. I use Duo Brush On Adhesive. It's, it's simple, it's like no fragrance or anything like that, so it doesn't bother me in any way. And it works really good, I like it a lot. But you have to, it goes on white, and then as it dries, it looks sort of bluish almost. And then it dries kind of dark, which is good for along the lash line and eyeliner. The glue is still wet and tacky as long as it's still blue. So you really gotta wait for it to look like it's starting to turn almost grayish or darker blue before you put it on. Because if the glue is still wet, it's not gonna stick to your, it's not gonna stick. It's gonna wiggle around and slide. It won't stay. I also tend to try to lift them and sort of apply them in a way that's kind of pointed up. But, I mean, that, again, it has to do with your eye shape, whether that's going to, like, really work well for you or not. You just got to kind of try and practice with lashes. It takes time. Another tip I can think of is to apply your glue a little bit along, like, this inner part of the band a little bit, as well as the end. Or edge, I guess. Because that part is going to be up against where your lashes are. So if you apply some of your glue along this sort of edge where like the root of your lashes is going to be touching it can help you get a better stronger hold which when you're new to lashes is really really helpful that it'll stick easier now that I'm used to lashes I tend to apply less than that just to protect my natural lashes because I am I have an easier time applying lashes than I used to now it's easy to just pop them on and it goes pretty smoothly most of the time most of the time so I try to minimize the amount of glue that I use now, but when learning, it's very, very helpful to make those lashes as sticky as you possibly can to help yourself out and make it easier to get it applied. Okay, so I've got my next one ready. I had to wait for it to get tacky, not slippy. So when I apply them, I start in the center, but that I found to be tricky at first when I first started doing lashes because it's like, until you really get them on, you don't know how close to the center you want it or how far in you want it to go. And every pair of lashes tapers a little bit differently and stuff like that. So that part I always found a little tricky. Like where exactly do you do you aim your lashes when you put them on? I have no good advice for it. I just sympathize with the struggle. If you're new to lashes, it is hard to figure it out. It takes time. I still sometimes have one of them a little closer to the middle than the other and it drives me nuts. But I just tell myself that other people don't notice or don't care. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Because then I'll never be able to wear lashes because I'll constantly be worried that they're too uneven. I just take it the same as wings for your eyeliner. It's never going to match perfectly. And that's okay. That's pretty much it for the makeup look as a whole. I'm gonna do my lips real quick. I'm using Pale Pink Lip Liner by NYX. And I'm filling it in pretty much all the way. And then I'm taking Plumalicious lipstick on the inner part and Julianne's nude on the outer part. So I'll explain in just a second. Then I'm gonna take a lip brush and just kind of blend everything.
So the lip liner I used, it's a little bit like just muted. It's like a pretty plain blush, but it's almost a little bit cool toned. So I wanted to kind of warm it up a little bit. And when you don't have anything like in the center of your pucker, it can just leave this like clear line of where your lighter color lip color starts and your natural lip color begins or vice versa if whichever one's lighter or darker it doesn't matter but it can leave a line like in your pucker I guess you could call it so I just don't like the way that looks I used this beautiful sparkly shimmery plum lipstick by Revlon called Plumalicious it's shade 465 and it's pearl pearlescent so that's that like sort of shimmeriness to it and then Julianne's Nude by Collection Privé L'Oreal Paris just a nice really peachy pinkish toned lipstick one of my favorites to wear it's got the tiniest bit of a sparkle to it but not much at all and then just blend it a little bit and it just gave me this lip color which is almost like a blushy mauve which is exactly what I wanted and then sometimes I'll apply Revlon's pearl Ap apricot fantasy shade 120 on the very top for a little bit extra sparkle and a little bit more warm tone but I'm not going to right now but sometimes I might later I might later and that is it that's the complete tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it made you happy. Have a very happy holiday season. All the products will be linked below in the products tab or in the description box, or at least a list of the products will be there too. Thank you so much for being here with me. I hope you do not mind these bonus videos and these tutorials. They're so much fun to do, and some of you guys like them. Some of you guys ask for them, so I hope everybody else who's not a fan is patient with me. Thank you so much again, you guys. I hope you have a very happy day ahead. I will see you next time. Bye!